Hey there, YouTube family. It's Josh with Stocks with Josh. And today I'm going to talk to you guys about crypto wallets. It was the number one question I was asked this last weekend. Is my crypto safe left on the exchange? Should I be moving it off? And it's a reasonable concern. There are big players who are being uh, threatened with liquidation and the markets have really been in turmoil. I use wallets. I only use Coinbase or Coinbase Pro to on-ramp money into the crypto space. And I immediately send my crypto from there to the respective wallet that I'm wanting to use it in. I'm going to talk to you guys today about custodial wallets, hot wallets and cold wallets. And I'm going to talk to you guys about which wallets I'm using and how you could research which wallets you may want to use. Before we begin, please invest in that like. Uh, if you are new to the page and you want uh, complex stock and crypto topics broken down for you as if I were speaking to my grandma, then go ahead and subscribe. And remember that I will never contact you in the comment section and ask you to reach out to me on Telegram or WhatsApp. I will never ask you to send me money or crypto. And anything I say is not a suggestion for you to buy, sell or hold a stock. Okay. Uh, there are basically three types of wallets I want to break down for you guys. There are custodial wallets, and that's actually what all of you guys have right now. If you have your crypto on an exchange, it's actually considered a custodial hot wallet. It simply means that the keys to your crypto are under the custody of the exchange like Coinbase or Binance and that you don't actually own them. And that's where the phrase not your keys, not your crypto comes from. And then there is a hot wallet, which is actually a wallet where you go and you buy your crypto from an exchange like Coinbase or Binance or FTX, and you transfer it over to your own hot wallet. And what makes it hot is that you can interact with other dApps or apps uh, with your wallet. And what that would look like is it would allow you to be involved in purchasing NFT projects or maybe participating in a metaverse uh, of one of those those tokens. That's a hot wallet. It's hot because it's connected to the outside world. And then you have a cold wallet. A cold wallet is like Ledger or Trezor. And it's cold because it's a physical device. I'll show it to you guys real quick. It basically looks like a USB. Uh, it's not a USB. Um, it connects to your computer via a USB-C cable. There's three models, small, medium, and large. And what makes them different, one from the other, is not how much of one coin it could hold. So you could have billions of dollars on a small uh, um, Ledger Nano. But the difference between them is the number of different coins that you could put on. So you, if you wanted to put on hundreds of coins, then you'd want one with larger space. So a cold wallet is cold because it does not connect to the outside world. You cannot use it to connect and buy NFTs. You cannot use it to connect to uh, uh, DeFi or various staking platforms. It's, it's isolated and it's safe. Nobody, if you can't connect to it, then nobody can connect to it. And that's what makes it cold. You say, well, what if I lost this little USB dongle? Uh, have I lost all my crypto? No, you can simply purchase another one. Uh, because when you go to set this up and connect it to your computer, you're going to create a seed phrase. Okay, now that if you lost that, then you would lose your crypto. The seed phrase that you create when setting up your cold ledger uh, device, you need to permanently store it somewhere where it's not going to get lost or stolen or compromised because that is the same as the possession of your crypto. But assuming that you have put that into a vault or a safe place and you have it secure, then you really can never lose your crypto. As long as you get another ledger, you can reconnect it and you can type in your seed phrase and all of your crypto will appear. It is the safest way for you to hold your crypto long term. Uh, it really can not be compromised from what I can see. That's a cold wallet. And, that's, and another dynamic of wallets that a lot of people maybe don't understand is that you can't put every crypto on every wallet. So there are wallets that are directly tied to certain cryptos. But in the case of Ledger, they've set it up in such a way that they can take almost all cryptos, not every crypto. There are probably some micro coins or meme coins that 
have that it's not set up for but i but there are really no other limitations to the different types of cryptos and level ones that you can store on it but that's not the case for hot wallets so a hot wallet is a software that basically becomes an add-on or a plug-in to your browser the most popular one is metamask which is based on the ethereum network and it basically is something that you download and it becomes a plug-in maybe in your google chrome or your brave and you again have seed phrase that you have to remember and it's just as important that you don't lose that remember that the custodial hot wallet which is like coinbase or binance they if you lost your password to sign into your account you haven't lost your crypto you can basically get a new password or get it reset and then bam you have access to all of your crypto so you have to ask yourself if maybe you have under five thousand dollars worth of crypto maybe under two thousand you have to ask yourself is it worth me taking on the responsibility of storing my own seed phrase and making sure it doesn't get lost or stolen or compromised or should i just trust coinbase to do that that's a personal de decision of how safe you want to be i believe that if you're doing long-term investing and you've got you know thousands of dollars and tens of thousands of dollars i think it's definitely something you want to consider to get your own hardware device and store it long term uh, but there are real risks to doing that in a way it's like holding on to that seeds phrase is sort of like storing cash in your mattress if your house burnt down and your mattress burnt up your cash is gone all right but back to hot wallets so the most common hot wallet that that is used is metamask it's based on the ethereum network but it can hold other coins that are not uh, they can hold other level ones because if those level ones are what's called ethereum compliant then it's also set up to hold other level ones like bnb token can be stored on your metamask wallet but beyond that there are other level ones that you really can't store on metamask it, they have their own wallets and so yes when you get into the wallet game you might end up with five or six different hot wallets that you are putting your crypto on so that you can do something with your crypto whether it be DeFi, nfts or metaverse so if you're dealing with uh, ada for example you're going to use the wallet nami there are other ada wallets i use nami i've did my research and i chose it i'm going to show you guys at the end of this video how to research which wallets exist for different plat for different cryptos and so that you can choose for yourself which one you want to use um, for uh, Solana, I use Phantom. I had no issues with it. I found it to be a really good application. For eGold, I use Myr. Uh, for Dot, Fearless. Uh, but I try to store, uh, you know, as much as I can on my uh, MetaMask. But let's talk about MetaMask for a moment, and let's talk about some of the pitfalls to putting your money on a wallet. I don't want to freak you guys out, but I want to prepare you as much as I possibly can with things that can go wrong and how you should set up those wallets. Nobody tells you when you set up a MetaMask wallet that you can actually set up as many wallets within that uh, uh, application as you would like. And you say, well, why would I want to set up different wallets? for security okay you can set up one wallet to store all of your crypto in and another wallet on metamask in the same application so you don't got to set up two different accounts so in the same account you can set up two wallets the second wallet is the wallet you use to interact with all the different softwares and applications and dApps okay and you only send the money from the first wallet to the second wallet that you intend to use. And you say, Josh, why go through these precautions? Because there are definitely scammers out there who will attempt to hack your wallet and they will attempt to suck everything out of it, right? And if you only are giving them access to the wallet that you're attempting to use in the DAP, then they only have the ability to take the money that you've set aside for that particular uh, application and not all of your money. If you're looking for the most security, then put your money in a cold wallet. If you're looking to get involved in NFTs, metaverses, and DeFi, then that's where you get these hot wallets like MetaMask and, and Nami and Phantom. Okay, I'm going to take you guys... Uh, oh, I, I wanted to mention 
a little bit about signatures and approvals. There is an option within MetaMask. I'm gonna do another video that's gonna be a quick setup video about transferring money and creating the MetaMask wallet. Uh, but there's an option in there I wanna just pre-communicate to you guys that says in advance to disconnect you from all websites. What can happen is people have set up their wallets and they've stayed connected to a website, which, is, which has enabled people to ultimately through the back door hack them. Another dynamic is it'll give you the option of allowing the website. So if you do a transaction on the website, it'll give you the option of allowing your wallet to automatically approve it. You don't want to do that. You want to sign and self-approve every transaction that's coming off of the website. You want to maintain maximum control. I will cover that in another video. Um, real quick, let's just go to uh, MetaMask. I want to show that to you guys. Um, I want to just tell you about the importance of being mindful that you're on the right uh, websites. So when you are on a different website, you have to understand there's lots of scammers. So one of the best ways to qualify that you are on the right website is actually to go to the company's Twitter, uh, official Twitter verified profile and follow their link from that verified Twitter profile to their website. The concern there is if you just type in MetaMask and you, you know, you could type in MetaMask and the website is MetaMask.com, but you, you get MetaMask.biz and you find yourself providing all your financial information to a scam. I had a similar situation like that in an NFT project that I was involved in. Uh, I did lose a little bit of money. I, I got a, I got a, 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 a message that a project that I was really interested in was minting their NFT. And that's not unusual because they change the mint dates all the time in NFT projects. They'll put them off a day. They'll even sometimes do them early or they'll change the time frame. And so even though it wasn't the time frame that I was expecting, I thought, oh, they're, they're just going early. I jumped on. I it asked you to connect your MetaMask wallet. I connected my MetaMask wallet and right away it said, uh, you know, username and password is wrong. And I thought, well, that's strange. But then they, then they had a little protocol to resetting up your username and password and that eventually failed and then they asked you to put your seed phrase in. It was at that point that I got suspicious and I took a step back and I thought, what's going on here? And so, you know, I just am saying that not to freak you guys out about using wallets, but to say that it's extremely important that you, that you go through that process you verify the website every time you're interacting with it and that you don't respond to any links or messages or communication from anybody unless you typed it into your browser and you went to the page. You have to assume everything else is a scam. Kevin O'Leary made a comment um, in an interview. He said, he said, your first wallet's going to get hacked and you're going to lose all your money, which is just <laughs> an absolutely horrible thing to say. Uh, but I think it's worth saying your first cold wallet will never get hacked. But yes, you're likely to have some problems with your hot wallets and you need to be uh, uber, uber cautious about that. I want to take you guys real quick to how to research uh, the, different, the different wallets that are available. All right, so I'm going to re recommend two sites, CoinMarketCap, okay? Um, you go and you click on a particular coin that you're interested in knowing what wallets are available. And then right here, there's a tab. Once I selected Bitcoin, it gave me these tabs across the middle. And there's one that says wallets. If you click on that, it'll give you a list of wallets that are available. The reason why I'm gonna share with you two different companies that I want you to look at when you research the different wallets that are available for different cryptos is I know for a fact that CoinMarketCap is not uh, uh, independent. They actually allow different uh, crypto projects to pay to put their name higher up on the list, making it look like they're the better uh, wallet or the better you know application, but that's not the case. They will give you correct information, but but they are selling, uh, selling placement on their site. The other one is um, CoinGecko. Uh, and in this case, it's the same thing. When you get to the site, you choose which coin you want to be involved in. And then right up here, you get the different uh, wallets, okay, that are available for that. Um, 
So on each page, you're going to be given the option of, of you know, which wallets can be used uh, for those different coins. So uh, that's a little bit of a breakdown. I know this is a big subject. We're going to cover it more than once. I'm going to go into the different level ones that I personally invested in, and I'm going to share with you what NFTs, what games, what metaverse projects I'm involved in on those different level ones, which wallets I'm using. And uh, so I think you guys are going to really enjoy that. I hope that all of this was helpful to you. Again, feel free to ask me questions in the comment. Hit that like. Um, it's been great talking with you guys today, and I appreciate you letting me be part of your financial journey, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.